Hello, we're the strikers. I'm Dries. And I'm Jente. <laughs> and we are taking you on a visit of the Donjon of Rotslaar. Which they are right now raising funds to restore its roof. Let's go and check it out. Even though it's called a donjon now, the Donjon der Heide has always been known as a tower or tourist in Latin. Only in the Romantic era did we start calling it a donjon. A lot of mystery surrounds the tower, but we know one thing for sure. It was built by Gerard van der Heide. Van der Heide was Drossaert of the Duchy of Brabant in the second half of the 14th century. As Drossaert, he had a prominent position in the duchy and he wanted to emanate his status by building this impressive tower. His grand display of power was built around 1350 to 1380. The most unique feature of this tower is its ground plan. It's the only known tower in Europe to follow the plan of a Greek cross. But its ground plan is not the only unique feat of engineering of the Donjon der Heide. The tower was constructed out of bricks. This was very uncommon at the time. After the fall of the Roman Empire, the art of making bricks was lost for many centuries. Only a couple of decades earlier, at the beginning of the 14th century, brickmaking was rediscovered in the Low Countries. Despite its outward appearance of a fortified keep with arrow slits and a moat, the tower was designed as a residence and didn't really serve a military purpose. The tower was burned down twice during turbulent years in the 15th and 16th centuries. The first time by Maximilian of Austria and a second time during the Wars of Religion. The property was later sold to the Van Eynatte family in the early 17th century. The Van Eynattes rebuilt the tower and added new elements. Examples of this are the stripes of alternating iron sandstone and limestone on the sides and the intricate roof. They also constructed the Renaissance farm building. The coat of arms of the Van Eynatte family has been incorporated in the facade of the farmhouse. As participants of the Crusades, they're one of the very few noble families who are allowed to incorporate so-called Merle in their coat of arms. The tower has a basement, an aula on ground level, and three chambers or camerae on the subsequent floors. As a drossaard, Gerard van der Heiden could host his own court of law in his aula. In one of the arms of the Greek cross hides the toilet in such a way the inhabitants weren't hindered by the smell. On the first floor of the tower you can still see a beautiful original gothic fireplace. More to the left the remains of the original floor tiles are still visible. In the 19th century, the influential Aremberg family bought the tower. They mistook it for the then disappeared castle of the Lord of Rotzelaar, who they believed had been an ancestor of theirs. To them, we thank the pear-shaped addition on top. By the end of the 19th century, the farm buildings were transformed into a brewery. The beautiful brick chimney is still a stark reminder. After brewing beer for a couple of decades, the brewery also moved location, but the entire complex is still owned by the descendants of the brewer's family. They are the ones who set up the fundraiser to preserve this unique tower and its history. This was the donjon of Rotslaar. I uh, actually grew up around these parts and it's great to see it up close. They're still looking for funds to save the roof, so if you want to support them, we will drop all the information in the description down below. Thanks so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe and all that good YouTube stuff if you want to see more of these kind of historical buildings. And until next time, bye! bye.